exactly what you want to see. Let's run this puppy in. Score a touchdown and tie this game. Life, run for your life, touchdown on one play. Worked on this in practice. Touchdown. It's up to Kelvin Benjamin. This is all you, buddy. Kelvin Benjamin for a touchdown. Oh, he toasted his man. Holmes toasted his man. Spin move. Oh! Oh! What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the video here on the World of Juice channel, and welcome back to a little bit of a tradition here on the channel. We started this probably last year, maybe maybe a couple years ago on the channel. Now at this point, I don't really know. Uh, I know I did it last year, but we are gonna not this version, but we're gonna be doing a official NFL teams ranking list for the 2022-2023 NFL season. It is starting up actually next week i think sometime in in early september it's starting i'm not 100 sure like maybe the second week of september so I, I have no idea actually i think it's the second week of september but it's starting up really really quick and i haven't done my official predictions yet of who i think is going to suck and who i think is going to be really good so that's what this video is going to be it's probably going to be pretty controversial it's probably going to be makes a lot of people mad but that's what i'm here for to make people mad so hope you guys enjoy let's get right into it Okay, so as you can see, we have our tier maker, our tier list thing, and we've got, here, here are the, the, the rankings, here are the, the tiers. So we have Super Bowl contenders, which I think are teams that are going to be 14 wins plus, they're, they're really good, you know what Super Bowl contenders are. Then you got the playoff hopefuls, the teams that, that every year they think they're going to make the playoffs and have a good shot. Then you got the playoff misses, which are those average to mediocre teams that, nine to seven wins you, you, they could make the playoffs but you never know then you got the mediocre teams that uh that are not gonna not gonna be very good but they're not gonna be like number one pick in the draft bad but they're just not gonna be good they're gonna be like the worst the worst teams because you don't want to be in this area this is no man's land winning four to six games you don't want to be in that spot because if you are then you're not going to have the number one overall pick, but you're also not going to have any hope of making the playoffs. So it's just, it's just a bad spot to be in. You don't want to be in that spot. And then we've got, I actually changed this, but it, it must have not saved or whatever. So I actually changed it to, uh, to this, if I could spell right. There we go. <laughs> that's more like it. Oh, that's not what I want to do. That's, uh, did it change it back? Okay, it saved it. Perfect. Have uh, you must have Urban Meyer as your head coach? Three to zero wins. That's uh, that's perfect. That fits perfect. Okay, so we are gonna get started here on this list. We'll start with the Super Bowl contenders. Uh, actually, you know what? We're gonna start with the teams that I think are trash. So <laughs> let's just get this out of the way. Falcons. Boom, boom, uh, boom, boom. Panthers. I'll keep the Panthers for now. Who else I think is going to be garbage this year? Seahawks for sure. Can't forget about them. Uh, Bears probably in that tier too. Okay. I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good this year. These are the teams. These are just the, the god-awful teams. And I can I can break it down for you if you really want me to. Falcons, Marcus Mariota, obviously not the guy. Desmond Ritter, who knows? Maybe Desmond Ritter is going to be the guy. I don't really know. I'm not one to tell. I, I think that Desmond Ritter is not going to be amazing, but he could surprise me. And Kyle Pitts is really the only bright spot of that team, at least on offense. And they're just, they're bad. They are a bad team. Texans, Davis Mills is, I, I personally have a, a love for Davis Mills because he was our first quarterback on the Chicago Cougars. Uh, relocation franchise, Madden 22. He won us a Super Bowl. He was, uh, he was a very good quarterback for us in Madden. In real life, he's average to below average. And having a below average to average quarterback in the NFL with the talent or lack thereof around him is not going to get you anywhere. So the Texans aren't going to be good. The Jags, the Jags are, are an interesting one because it's year two of Trevor Lawrence. He's under a new head coach. Could Do I think they could win four games, five games? There's a possibility, but I think it's a very low possibility that they could do that. So I have them down here. The Jets... The MILF hunter himself, Zach Wilson. Uh, the team is like trending in an upward direction. I will give them that. 
I, out of all these teams, I think the Jets are a team that I could certainly see winning four or five games just because they have that raw talent of all those young guys. They have a decent defensive line. They have some good corners, good secondary. They have a good uh, good couple weapons in, in Elijah Moore and Garrett Wilson for Zach Wilson to throw to. Good young running back in Brees Hall. So they, they've got the pieces there. It's just, are they all going to be able to play well together in year number one of all, of all of them being together? And it's year two of Zach Wilson. He already had a little bit of an injury scare in the preseason. So out of all these teams, I think the Jets are the one team that I could actually see being in the higher tier, in the, the mediocre tier. But I'm going to put them here for now as my, as my personal prediction. Then we have the Seahawks. They're just... <laughs> do we even have to mention the Seahawks? They are going to be so bad. Out of all these teams, the Jets or the uh, the Seahawks and the Falcons are the two teams I think have a legit shot of going winless this year. Now, I personally don't think any team is going to go winless. I think there will be one team that at least wins one game. Every team will win at least one game. So... But but those two teams, the Falcons and the and the Seahawks, have a legit shot, in my opinion, of, of being the two winless teams. I don't think both of them will go winless, especially if they play each other. But I don't I don't think any of them will go winless. But but they are the out of all the the 32 NFL teams, I think those two teams have the best shot of of being winless at the end of the season. They they're officially announced they're starting Geno Smith over Drew Locke in week number one, which is just not gonna be good because Geno Smith is not good. But Drew Locke's not good either. So I mean they're in a bad spot. They have a bad offensive line, bad defense, bad head coach at this point. It's just not a it's not a good situation there. And then the Chicago Bears. The oh, Bears. They have a young quarterback in Justin Fields. I'm very, very excited about Justin Fields. I personally have a, uh, a strong connection with Justin Fields because he is the former Ohio State quarterback. So I, I want to see him do well. And it sucked when he got drafted to the Bears last year because I just knew that it wasn't going to be a good situation for him. And it proved right because that offensive of line is one of the best. Or, excuse me. I'm not talking about the Bears. That offensive line is one of the worst offensive lines in the league. I think it's like top three worst offensive lines in the league. So I, I guess I should rephrase that to bottom three <laughs> offensive lines in the league. They have Darnell Mooney, but that's about it. Cole Komet is cool. He's nice, uh, but it's not going to matter. He could have all the weapons in the world. It's not going to matter if he doesn't have time in the pocket to throw. That offensive line is not great. Roquan Smith is really good. Eddie Jackson's okay. Uh, other than that, there's not a whole lot of promise on the defense side things, so the Bears are going to be pretty bad this year. Now we move into the mediocre teams. Mediocre. And this is where we get into a situation where I think the Panthers fit nicely into mediocre. I think the Eagles fit nicely into mediocre. Uh, the Vikings probably fit in that direction too. I could actually see the Vikings getting 9-7 to seven wins, but I think I'm going to be a little bit harsh on them. The Giants probably fit into that tier the lions probably f i think the lions i don't want to get on the hype train of the lions because they still have jared goff as their their head uh, their quarterback and dan campbell as their head coach and i do not believe in either one of those guys i've talked about this many times on the channel before in the past you can go look it up um i've talked about how dan campbell is a nice a nice guy i'm sure he's a great stand-up guy i'm sure he gets those guys pumped up to the max but dan campbell is not a head coach in this league he is at best a strength and conditioning coach. <laughs> so Dan Campbell being a head coach, I don't trust. I don't believe in Jared Goff. I certainly don't believe in as a quarterback. They do have some nice weapons. They drafted Aiden Hutchinson this year. Uh, Jamison Williams is a stud if he can come back healthy from his knee injury. DeAndre Swift's nice. A nice fantasy running back. Uh, they've got a decent to average offensive line their defense is okay i i think they could surprise some people i certainly think they're better than the teams that are in uh the the three the zero to three range i think they could surprise some people and win four maybe five games that's probably stretching a little bit too much probably four games but i, th I think they're gonna be in there the giants giants are bad daniel jones not good um kenny galladay just like isn't good right now he could maybe surprise people and turn out to be actually decent but he's got a horrible quarterback thrown in the football Saquon Barkley is he going to be healthy I don't know maybe hopefully I like Saquon Barkley I hope he gets healthy they are uh they're they're not good they're not a good team but they're better than these teams that's for sure the Vikings Vikings is probably one of the controversial ones because they have Justin Jefferson they have Dalvin Cook they have a decent defense and they have Kirk Cousins but I don't really trust Kirk Cousins 
to have a good year. If we're being honest, I don't believe in Kirk Cousins. I don't think he's a guy. I've talked about this many times on the channel as well. I don't believe Kirk Cousins is in that tier of quarterbacks that you can win a game. Well, you can win a game with him, obviously. I don't think he's a, a difference-making quarterback. In the, I think that's pretty obvious that he's not a difference-making quarterback in this league. And at some point, you need a difference-making quarterback, or at least on occasion, you need a difference-making quarterback to win you some ball games. And I don't think Kirk Cousins can do that. He, Justin Jefferson might be able to do that. Dalvin Cook might be able to do that if he stays healthy. But it's just not a team that I believe in very much. So I think they're on the higher end towards the six range, but I don't think they get any higher than that. The Philadelphia Eagles, now this one might be the, the most controversial because I know that there are a ton, a ton of fans out there that are super high on the Eagles this year. A lot of people have them making the playoffs because they made it last year. A lot of people have Jalen Hurts being amazing this year. But if we're being honest, I don't really believe that much in Jalen Hurts. I hope he proves me wrong. I really do. But I don't think Jalen Hurts is that good of an NFL quarterback. Yeah, he's, he's a good scrambler. He can throw the ball. He's got a good arm. I just don't think he's got what it takes to be a, a 10 year starter in this league. And so I don't believe that with him at quarterback, that Eagles team can reach their true potential. I know they have a, a really good defense and their weapons are good. Devonta Smith is obviously really, really good. Uh, Dallas Goddard's good. Uh, the running back situation is a little shaky, but other than that, they've got a solid offensive line. So, I mean, everything seems to be good enough to make the playoffs. And obviously they, they were because they made the playoffs last year with Jalen Hurts. But I just don't think that they're, I mean, we saw what happened in t against Tampa. They got smacked. And yeah, that's Tampa, but it could happen with against anybody. So I just, I don't really believe in, in Jalen Hurts. I don't believe in the, the hype train. I don't believe in the Eagles. I think they're mediocre. And then the Panthers, they've, they've got some weird things going on. Is it Baker? Is it Sam? I think right now it's going to be Baker, obviously, because he, he won the job and I think Sam just got an injury like hurt his ankle or something he's gonna be out for like a month or two so it is Baker's job and the team is good is Christian McCaffrey that's the big that's the big wonder that's the big question is can Christian McCaffrey stay healthy if he can then that offense is gonna run pretty good because we saw what Baker could do with Nick Chubb and with Jarvis Landry and all those guys because he never threw the ball to Odell Beckham Jr but we won't talk about that so Baker, Christian McCaffrey, a good offensive line, solid, uh, average offensive line. And then the defense line with Brian Burns and they've got some, they've got Derek Brown in the D tackle spot. They've got some good corners. I, I like the, the Panthers defense. I think they're going to be pretty good, but I like the Eagles. I think they're going to be at the higher end of the mediocre teams, but I think they're going to be mediocre at the end of the day because I don't really believe in Baker that much or Sam Dust. I certainly don't believe in Sam Darnold, but I, I don't necessarily believe in Baker to be the guy to carry a team to more than six or seven maybe eight wins at the most i know he led the browns to the playoffs but i don't i think that was just a one-year thing i don't believe baker can do that consistently maybe he'll prove me wrong i i don't know we'll find out i guess so that is the the trash teams and the mediocre teams now we get to the miss the playoff teams actually i'm gonna put the com i forgot about the commanders i'm gonna put the commanders in the mediocre teams i i have no hope in carson wentz i know a lot of people do I don't see what they see in Carson Wentz. I think Carson Wentz is one of the worst quarterbacks I've ever watched. And not because he's got no talent. I'm not saying that. Carson Wentz has NFL talent. I mean, he plays in the NFL. Obviously, he has talent. But Carson Wentz is one of those quarterbacks that makes the dumbest decisions on a consistent basis that I've ever seen. He is, and that's why he's one of the worst quarterbacks, in my opinion, because he makes the just mind-numbing decisions with the football and I know you're under pressure yeah a lot of people would make those I would make those same decisions that Carson Wentz would make but when he's an NFL player he had all this hype he was an MVP candidate before he got injured Carson Wentz has has the ability he just I don't believe I think he's one of the worst quarterbacks because of, because of that reason so with that they've got a solid defense Chase Young can come back healthy I believe in Chase Young I like that defense a lot but I don't think they really have a lot on offense so I think they're in the in the uh, this tier. I, I'd actually put them probably like right here. I think that they, these four teams could go up to this one if they have good quarterback play. Other than that, I don't think so. So that's all the mediocre teams. Now we get to the teams that miss the playoffs just barely, like the nine to seven win teams. And I think this is where we're gonna put the Steelers because even though they have some quarterback controversy. I think that 
the tandem of Mitch Trubisky and Kenny Pickett or whoever they choose, certainly not Mason Rudolph, can propel them to win seven to eight games this year because you have Mike Tomlin. He's never had a losing record. You have TJ Watt, obviously one of the best, if not the best defensive player in the NFL. The Steelers defense is obviously really, really good every year. Najee Harris is a demon. So, I mean, they've got pieces. They've certainly got like really, really good pieces. But that quarterback position, there's a reason why it's the most important position on the field besides the left tackle spot. Because without it, without a good, competent quarterback, you're not going to go anywhere. You're just going to be stuck in the mud. So I think that maybe Kenny Pickett, since nobody's really seen what he can do in a live game besides the preseason, but that doesn't really count. I think that he surprises some teams when he gets in there eventually. I think Mitch, Mitch Trubisky is going to be the starter, at least for right now. But I certainly believe that within the first couple months of the season, Kenny Pickett will probably have that job, whether it be by injury or just be by poor play from Trubisky. So I think that Kenny Pickett could jump into that role, maybe roll off a couple wins, two, three wins in a row because they teams haven't had a game plan for him because they don't, they've never seen him before. So I think they could, he could get a surprise factor and get a couple wins and that might propel them to the nine win, win, win uh, mark. So I think the Steelers are going to be just in the playoff misses. I don't think they make the playoffs, but I think the Steelers are going to just be in there Another team that I'm going to have in just the playoff misses is the Cleveland Browns. And that is solely because they will have Jacoby Brissett for a good chunk of the season. 11 games, they will have Jacoby Brissett. And I think you can, Browns fans can, can tout all they want. Oh, we have Nick Chubb. We have one of the best defensive lines in the league. We have one of the best offensive lines in the league. We have a great defense. It's, you can say all that. You can have Nick Chubb, you can have Kareem Hunt, you can have Miles Garrett, Denzel Ward, you can have a great offensive line. But that quarterback position, it goes back to the Eagles thing, it goes back to the Commanders thing, it goes back to the Panthers thing. You can have all that great stuff, but if you don't have a, a good quarterback that can win you some games when you need to, when you're tied 7-7 seven to seven or you're tied 13-13, to 13, you need a, a, a field goal or a touchdown to win a game, Jacoby Brissett's not going to get you that. We, he's proven that on the Patriots, on the Colts, on the Dolphins. He's proven that. There's a reason he's not a backup on the Patriots still. <laughs> or on the Colts. Or on the Dolphins. I mean, the Colts have been looking for a starting quarterback for a while since Andrew Luck retired. Jacoby Brissett had his opportunities. And the Colts had a better team than, than the Browns did, arguably. So, Jacoby Brissett has proven that he's not the guy. And he is not the guy in Cleveland either. And... When Deshaun Watson comes back in week 12 against the, the Texans, will he be the same guy he was before the injuries and before the, the sat out suspension last year, suspension, and now the official suspension this year? He's missed a lot of time. He is not in football shape. And football shape is a lot different than being just actually in, in physical shape. So I think this Browns team, they may rattle off a couple of wins. I think they have a pretty decent... Uh, schedule in terms of like easy so I think they could maybe sneak some wins because of how good their defense is and because of how good Nick Chubb is but no when if they get into a tight game against a good team or a, an even a decent like average team Jacob Brissett's not going to be there to to win any games he's not going to do that so the Browns are not going to make the playoffs they're just not and Deshaun's going to come back too late for that to even matter so Browns will not be good good enough to uh to win any games that make that matter so browns are in the that tier i'm also going to put the colts in, in this tier and that is because of the fact that uh matt ryan's garbage <laughs> it's that simple i have said on this channel that i believe matt ryan is the most overrated quarterback of recent memory and i have my reasons one, it's because I just don't personally like Matt Ryan. I don't think he's that great. But two, he was overhyped. He was, yeah, he's got a ton of passing yards. He's got an NFL MVP. But when it came down to the big moments, you can blame the coaching staff. You can blame a lot of stuff. But when it comes down to the big moments in that Super Bowl, Matt Ryan was one of the big reasons why they choked that lead to the Patriots. And I just don't think, yeah, he's got a lot of passing yards, but he had Julio Jones. He had Mohamed Sanu. He had a lot of offense on that team and they still couldn't beat the Patriots. And ever since then, he has just not been the guy. I don't think he was ever really the guy, but he's now on the Colts and they've got Jonathan Taylor, who's top three running back in the league. They've got a really good defense. So that might, same with the Browns. It's it's a very similar situation to the Browns, in my opinion. They've got a really good wide receiver in Michael Pittman. They've got a really good running back in Jonathan Taylor and a super, super good defense. But that 
quarterback position will decide things. And Matt Ryan, in my opinion, is not good enough to propel the Colts past his blemishes and past his downfalls. So I think they fall in the same tier. So that's my opinion on the Colts. You probably hate it. I'm sure you do. The rest of the teams, let's see. I think the Raiders fall into this tier. I really do. I'm not big on Derek Carr. I mean, I think he's a really good quarterback. They add Devontae Adams. They have Max Crosby, obviously. Josh Jacobs on offense, too. Um, they have Darren Waller, who's one of the best tight ends, top three in the league. Uh, top four in the league, because don't, don't want to forget about Mark Andrews. So... I think the Raiders, the Raiders are out of all these teams probably go, I'd probably switch it like this to make it where the Raiders could go up. I could certainly see the Raiders go and I can even see the Colts going up to 10 wins and making the playoffs if Matt Ryan surprises me, but I don't think he will. But the Raiders, I think are the first team that misses out on the playoffs. One, because that division is really good. You've got Russell Wilson now in Denver. You've got Justin Herbert, Herbert, Herb, Justin Herbert. Don't know why I struggled to say that. Justin Herbert and the Chargers. And you've got, obviously, Mahomes and the Chiefs. So, I think the Raiders are the odd team out. And, uh, yeah, Devontae Adams is a Hall of Fame level talent. And the defense is okay. Pretty good. But I don't think just solely based on the tough matchups they have to go up against in the, in the division. And I think they have a pretty decent schedule. I just don't think they're going to get enough good breaks to be able to win enough games to make the playoffs. I think they probably win nine games. But in a tough division, I don't think that's going to be good enough. And a tough AFC, actually. So, is that all the teams that I think are just are just playoff misses? Hmm. I'd probably put the Titans in this boat, too. The Titans coming back with Derrick Henry. Is he going to be the same guy? Probably not. He's getting older. He's like 29 years old, 28 years old. He's getting a little bit older and... The style of run that he, the style of, of play that he he does is so physical that, especially with a guy like him that's already had these foot problems and these ankle issues, it's going to be really, really hard for him to be back to the Derrick Henry that should have won MVP a couple of years ago. That Derrick Henry was amazing. This Derrick Henry, he may come back and be a cyborg. He, we, we don't know. We haven't seen him play yet. So... It could all change week one when he gets back on the field. But as of right now, not seeing him play and just going off of what I think could happen, I think he's going to start to break down a little bit, especially if they're going to give him the carries that they have been giving him. Same situation with Christian McCaffrey. Although Christian McCaffrey is more of an elusive running back. And so Ryan Tannehill, I've never believed in Ryan Tannehill. I don't think he's the guy at all. He's in the same boat as Kirk Cousins, in my opinion. And they got rid of all their talent on offense, at least with the wide receivers. They've got a rookie wide receiver that's probably going to be wide receiver number one. Actually, they got Robert Woods now, so he's probably going to be number one. And then Bur Burks will be two. But the defense is good, but is it good enough to, to combat the struggles that the offense is probably going to have? I don't know. So I think them and the Raiders are probably those two teams that are right there on the, the cusp of, of 10 wins, but probably don't get it. Now we go to teams that are playoff hopefuls. Let's see. I probably put the Broncos in playoff hopefuls. I put the Cowboys in playoff hopefuls, the Cardinals, the Chargers, the Saints, and the Ravens. Yeah, no, and the 49ers, and the 49ers. And you've seen that I've, I've left the Patriots. I'm going to do the Patriots separately after I rank all these other guys. <laughs> so... These are the teams that I feel... Oh, and the Dolphins. I forgot about the Dolphins. Uh, I'll probably put the Dolphins on miss the playoffs. I think they have a really good wide receiver core now with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. The defense has always been turnover happy. They've always been pretty good. Uh, the offensive line has gotten better. But again, it comes back to that conversation with Tua. Is Tua the guy? Yeah, you can show all the highlights you want of practice where Tua's lobbing balls to Tyreek Hill, but I've seen those videos too, and those balls are underthrown. Tyreek Hill has to stop and come back to them, and there's no quarter, there's no defensive line or linebackers blitzing Tua on those plays. So Tyreek Hill is a difference maker. Can he propel the team to seven, eight wins? Probably, but I think they're on the lower end of that. I think they're along with the Steelers where they're at seven, eight wins. That's probably good enough to sneak into the playoffs, maybe, depending on how good the the, the conference is, but Tua, I don't think, is going to be that great. Even with Tyreek Hill, Tyreek Hill's going to get his numbers. He's going to get his. 
but and Jalen Waddle's gonna get his too and Gesicki they're all gonna get their numbers but put together as a whole with two at quarterback I don't think they're gonna make the playoffs so the Dolphins are there um the Broncos are always good on defense they just were looking for that quarterback I think they found their quarterback obviously in Russell Wilson he's a Hall of Fame quarterback and so I think the Broncos are going to be pretty good. I think they're going to be at the top of that division. I think they'll finish. They might even finish first, really, in the division because they've got a better defense, in my opinion, than than Kansas City. They've got not as good of a quarterback, really, but they have pretty much everything else. Not a tight end, but really everything else is better. The Chiefs are going to struggle with the loss of Tyree Kill, I feel like, but I think the Chiefs are probably going to be able to fight their way back. Uh, the Cowboys... What do you want to say about the Cowboys, man? They're always right there. Dak's a really good quarterback. CeeDee Lamb's a difference maker. Zeke or Tony Pollard, whoever you feel is the running back in, in Dallas, are both really good. I think Zeke's going to have a comeback year this year. Um, defensively, Micah Parsons is insane. Travion Diggs gets a lot of hate because he is just a, a home run corner where he just goes for the interceptions and he gets burnt a bunch of the time too. So it's very, very uh, hit or miss with Trayvon Diggs, but he's a solid corner. The defense is good. They were obviously the best, one of the best fantasy, if not the best fantasy defense in uh, the league last year. And Dak's obviously always one of the best fantasy quarterbacks, but that doesn't necessarily translate to on the field stuff. I know that sounds weird, but you know what I mean. I think the Cowboys are playoff hopefuls, but I don't know how far they get in the playoffs if they do make it. The Cardinals, the Cardinals are always are an interesting one, man. I hate ranking the Cardinals in anything because solely of the fact that Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury are so weird, man. Cliff Kingsbury always crumbles to the end of the season. He There's a track record. He did it in college, and now he's done it every year that he's been in the league in, in the NFL. And Ky, Kyler Murray plays like a unbelievable best quarterback in the league level talent, MVP guaranteed level talent for like 10 weeks and then either he gets hurt or he's just maybe not that good it's just a, a like a, a facade and then he just crumbles and absolutely crumbles and just not good at all like barely even useful and with this whole drama of the whole contract situation that went on this past off season with them putting that clause in his contract where he has to study the playbook a certain amount of time and now everybody's making memes about it. And then they eventually, I think they removed that clause from his contract now. And it's just a whole weird situation. I think they're they're a good enough team, obviously. They have the, the talent. They are going to miss DeAndre Hopkins, which kind of sucks. But they have the talent around Kyler to possibly make the playoffs. But I just, at the end of the day, I don't think Kyler's the guy. Kyler's a really good athlete. Kyler is amazing. I will give him that. He's got an arm. He's got the speed. He's got the elusiveness but he's just so small and he gets hurt time and time again. And we knew that coming into the NFL with him. We knew that coming out of college. I, I said this, I've said this plenty of times. I don't believe that Kyler Murray can ever be the guy, like the best quarterback in the league because he's so small. He gets hurt so often. I don't think that is going to work. So I think they've got a good enough team around him for them to be in the playoffs. But at the end of the day, I just, I think it's going to be another Ram situation. Uh, in terms of them losing in the playoffs like that. Chargers, there's so much hype around the Chargers, man. Everybody's got a hard on for Justin Herbert. They think that he is the next guy in the NFL, better than Patrick Mahomes, better than Tom Brady, better than Aaron Rodgers, better than every single quarterback in the league. Justin Herbert has so, so high of a ceiling. There's not even a ceiling there. It's just straight to the moon and even higher. So... I don't necessarily get the hype with Justin Herbert. I obviously know that he's a really good quarterback. He's got a cannon of an arm, and he's he's just a big body guy. He can get that ball into the wide receivers. He's got good talent around him, good defense. That Chargers team is going to be good. I'll tell you, uh, Chargers team is going to be good. They might even win the division. Who knows? But I just don't think that Justin Herbert is as good as people say that he is. Maybe he'll prove me wrong. He probably will. But as of right now, I don't get the hype that Justin Herbert is God's gift to the NFL. So that's just me. The Saints are interesting. I will say that much. The Saints are certainly interesting. Uh, Jameis Winston, I like. I do like Jameis Winston. 
he was playing really, really well before that ACL injury or MCL, whatever he had, uh, that took him out for the rest of the season. And they even won some more games with the bums that they had at quarterback. So the Saints defense is always really good. You're getting Michael Thomas back, can't guard Mike. You drafted Chris Olave, who I really, really love. Uh, you got Alvin Kamara, obviously. So they've got all the pieces. They certainly do. And if Jameis Winston can play like he played before the injury, Saints could be really tough. I'll give them that. The Baltimore Ravens, they get a lot of hate because I don't think a lot of people believe that much in Lamar Jackson. I personally love Lamar Jackson. I believe that if given the talent around Lamar, which he doesn't really have at this point, he really only has Mark Andrews and Jakey Dobbins is coming back from injury. How will he do? I don't know. But Rashad Bateman is your wide receiver one. I, I think Rashad Bateman's a fine wide receiver but he's not a number one in this league. And so Lamar is probably going to have to stick to a little bit more running game, which is what got him hurt last year. He struggled with injuries last year. They had to bring in Tyler Huntley and he did good too. But if the defense plays as good as they did last year, at times they were pretty shaky, but other times they were really, really good. And if Lamar can stay healthy and produce like he was producing his MVP season, or at least close to that level, Ravens are going to be scary. Then we get to the 49ers. And the 49ers are another just weird one. This is a lot of weird teams in this in this playoff hopeful division. So they're going to start Trey Lance. But weird thing is that they didn't trade Jimmy Garoppolo. They actually restructured his contract to bring him back for another season. So that's weird that Trey Lance is going to be the starter. He's the guy but now he's got to look over his shoulder. If he's got a bad first half, he's got to look over his shoulder and worry about, is Jimmy Garoppolo going to get play, replaced? Am I going to get replaced by Jimmy Garoppolo? That's what he's got to think about. That's what you're giving your rookie quarterback. You're not your rookie quarterback. Your, your young quarterback that's super, super raw already and needs a lot of time. And now he's got to look over his shoulder because the veteran guy that's gotten to him a super, gotten the, the team to a Super Bowl and an NFC Championship game within the last like four years is behind you, ready to go. He does get hurt a lot, which arguably is a, a knock on a pretty big knock on Jimmy Garoppolo. But still, that's a pretty good quarterback behind you, ready to go in if you make a mistake. So that's just that's a tough situation to be put in. Obviously, their defense is phenomenal. They've got George Kittle, they got Debo Samuel, they've got they've got the talent, they've got the weapons. It's just up to Trey Lance. And now we get to the Super Bowl contenders. Uh, obviously, Rams because they're defending champs. They just got better, I think. Um, Bucks are in there. Tom Brady. Whenever you have Tom Brady on your team, you're auto, you're automatically a Super Bowl contender, even if you've your talent has gotten worse. So they're automatically in there. The Bills automatically in there. They're good. Bengals. I think the Bengals are probably and the Chiefs are probably teams that I would put in the playoff hopefuls. I do like the Bengals. Trust me, I, I like the Bengals, and I'm gonna put the Chiefs up here too. So let's start with the Rams. The Rams Super Bowl contender, Super Bowl champions last year. Um, if Joe, I'm going to say that if Joe Burrow had literally one more second in the pocket on that final play, Jamar Chase was butt naked wide open. They would have won that game. I'm just saying. So you bring back Aaron Donald, you bring back Jalen Ramsey, you lose, uh, Odell and you lose Von Miller from that team, which does hurt. But I think that Matt Stafford's obviously really good. Although there is a weird thing going on with Matt Stafford where he's got like an injury to his shoulder and it's still not healthy, and we're like almost to the start of the season. So that's a little worrying, a little concerning. Cam Akers is coming back. I think he'll have a good season after coming back from that, uh, uh, what did he injure? He tore his his uh, Achilles, right? I think he tore his Achilles. And he came back in the playoffs, which is insane. So I think Cam Akers is going to be pretty good. Uh, I like Van Jefferson. Uh, the defense is obviously phenomenal. I think the Rams are going to be fine. Tampa, like I said, if you have Tom Brady on your team, you're automatically a Super Bowl contender. You got Mike Evans. You got Chris Godwin. Yeah, they've struggled on offensive line. They've gotten some retirements and a lot of injuries at center. So they are going to struggle there, but their defense is good. They've got uh, some good weapons on offense. I think they'll be okay. Buffalo really hasn't done much to, to get worse. Obviously, they've brought in Von Miller. Um, Josh Allen's still phenomenal. They've got good running back depth. They've got good wide receivers in Gabe Davis. They've got uh, Dawson Knox, who's a really solid tight end. I think the Bills will be fine. Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers, your two-time MVP, 
I honestly think that he shouldn't have either of those MVPs. I think it should have went to Derrick Henry and Tom Brady, but that's not for, for me to say because it's already happened. So Aaron Rodgers is your two-time MVP. They lost Devontae Adams, which is going to suck because that was Aaron Rodgers' go-to guy, but they do have uh, Aaron Jones. I forgot his name for a second. They do have Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, which is a nice uh, one-two punch, thunder and lightning out of the backfield. Their wide receiver core is not great. They have a couple rookie wide receivers. I think they have uh, they have Christian Watkins, or is that his name, Christian Watkins? The dude from Clemson, I think, is there. And uh, they have another guy, I can't remember. But then they obviously have Alan Lazard, who I don't think is, he's obviously not a number one. He might not even be a number two on a lot of NFL teams. But I think that Rodgers is good enough to get them to where they need to be. And I think they'll figure it out. And that defense is good. So I think the Packers will be good. And then we get to the Chiefs. And I know I skipped over the Bengals. I'll get to them in a second. Uh, the Chiefs, obviously, you got Patrick Mahomes. You got Travis Kelsey. You got Andy Reid. So, I mean, the core is still there except for Tyreek Hills now in Miami. So that's going to hurt a little bit. How are they going to do without Tyreek? Can they just plug and play anybody? Is McCole Hardman going to be that guy? Was Tyreek Hill not that special in that offense? Could it be anybody? Is it going to be McCole Hart? Is he still there? I don't even know if he's still there. But they've got Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, who has had a shaky start to his career, but is a solid running back in the league, I guess. Uh, so we'll see what they can do. Their defense is not... It's never been amazing, but it's been good enough to combat the offenses of the opposing teams and to hold them enough because their offense usually scores enough points where it doesn't matter how good their defense is. But this year it might matter because of Tyreek Hill being gone. So T Travis Kelsey is going to have to get a lot more targets. And the rest of the team is going to have to get a lot more targets. So it's going to be very interesting, but I think the Chiefs will figure it out in the end. I think they got a good, smart head coach, smart quarterback. I think they'll be fine. Cincinnati, Joe Shiesty, Joe Burrow, obviously one of the best quarterbacks, in my opinion, in the league. Top 10 for sure. Um... They fixed the offensive line. They fixed the one thing that they really needed. They needed maybe a couple players in the secondary. They did that. Uh, they franchise tagged Jesse Bates. He finally accepted the franchise tag, and he's coming back. He's going to play. Uh, Joe Mixon is obviously really good if he can stay healthy. They, Like I said, they fixed the uh, the one need, which is offensive line. They brought in a player from the Patriots, Ted Karras. They brought in uh, Lael Collins, right? They brought in a Cowboy uh, offensive lineman, I'm pretty sure. And I think they fixed the offense line. I think it's good enough to where Joe Burrow won't get sacked 60 million times a game or a season. And obviously you got Jamar Chase, who's just unbelievable. Uh, Tyler Boyd's a really good secondary wide receiver. Uh, T Higgins. I mean, Joe Burrow's made T Higgins going to get paid next season. And if the Bengals don't pay him, somebody's going to pay T Higgins because Joe Burrow's that good. So if you got Joe Burrow, if you got Jamar Chase, I think you can repeat what you did last year and get to the, the Super Bowl. I know it was a little bit of a Cinderella run, a little bit of a magical fairy tale run to the Super Bowl, but I think that they improved on the one issue, the one really big issue that they needed, which was the offensive line, and they kept everybody back, and Joe Burrow's healthy if, as long as that surgery that he had on like his, his kidney, not his kidney, like his, his uh, appendix was burst or something. He had something removed, but he should be fine for the season, and... I think the Bengals are going to be right back in the contention. I think they're going to be really good this year. So now we get to the Patriots. And I've got a separate video coming out of my honest opinion about the Patriots. So I won't go too in-depth in this video right here. But I do want to say that the Patriots are a miss-the-playoff team. I know... Patriots fans are losing their mind right now. What about Mac Jones? Bill Belichick doesn't miss the playoffs. What about this? What about that? Listen, I'll go more into de in depth on this, on the separate video, just solely talking about the Patriots. But listen to me. Mac Jones is a good quarterback. But this team is not very good. Did you watch that playoff game against Buffalo, I am one of the biggest Patriots fans that I have ever met, personally. But I watched that playoff game, and I watched that Week 17 game, and I was like, this team is not good. This team is not good. This team did not de deserve to be in the playoffs. And they just got smacked by Buffalo in the postseason. Absolutely embarrassed. With the whole world watching embarrassed 
and they got worse this year. So what in your right mind as a Patriots fan, honestly, do you think is is good about this team? Yeah, Ramondre Stevenson is a bright spot. He's a, he's a surprisingly good running back that nobody really had, at least that I talked to, had a lot of faith going into last season, but he surprised a lot of people, and he's a good running back. Damien Harris gets injured a lot, but he could be good too, I guess. The offensive line's not great. You lose Joe Tooney to the Chiefs. You lose Ted Karras. You still have David Andrews and Trent Brown and Isaiah Wynn and Michael Owenyu. But Michael Owenyu gets hurt often. Isaiah Wynn gets hurt almost every game. The offensive line's not great. Your defense just looks slow against the Buffalo D offense last year. Uh, you, you lost jc jackson which is going to be a lot bigger of a blow than i think patriots fans are giving credit for that's going to be really really big the secondary is not great yeah you bring in Devonte parker but Devonte parker was struggling on miami where where the ball was thrown a lot more so i think Devonte parker is going to be a bright spot like ramondre but this team is just not very good and i think it's going to punch a lot of Patriots fans in the face when they see a couple weeks of this season and the Patriots are struggling. Yeah, they're probably going to have some wins because Bill Belichick's a Hall of Fame coach, one of the best, if not the best of all time. Mac Jones is a good quarterback, so he'll get some wins. The Patriots will win some games, but it's just they're not very good in the grand scheme of things. If you, if you take a look at their roster, Matt Judon was amazing last year. Can he replicate that? I don't know. I just, I don't have a lot of faith in the Patriots. And that's coming from one of the biggest Patriots fans in the world. I don't believe the Patriots are that good this year. So that is my official tier rankings for the 2022-2023 NFL season. If you have any opinions, please let, them know, let me know down below in the comments if you disagree, if you agree, if you think this team should have been there, if you think this team should have been there, whatever you think about this tier list, let me know down below. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching. If you want to watch any more content, uh, just scroll around the channel. I've got three of them <laughs> if you want to go watch anything else. Uh, so thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I really do appreciate it, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.